Time for a main meal classic, and while it may not fit in with our 21st century ideals of healthy lean cuisine, it is absolutely the most delicious comfort food you will ever have. It's time for an old fashioned meatloaf on The One Pot Chef. Homemade meatloaf. Is there anything better? It's so simple to put together. It's just a matter of sort of mixing things together and that's really sort of the essence of easy comfort food and weekend cooking. So obviously to make meatloaf we're going to need meat. I've got a kilogram of beef mince or ground beef to my American friends. About just over two pounds. And to that I'm going to add one egg which will help to bind everything together. I'm adding in one brown onion. Now this onion has been chopped up very finely and then fried in a fry pan with a little bit of butter and some olive oil. And I added a little bit of salt while I was frying it to stop the onions from browning because I want them to be cooked but I want them to be soft so they'll integrate into the meatloaf nicer. I'm also adding in two cloves of crushed garlic. I'm just using two teaspoons out of a jar but of course feel free to use fresh. About a teaspoon of chopped dried parsley. Again, use fresh if you wish. A good squirt of tomato sauce or ketchup or whatever you call it. Oh dear. Good belt of freshly cracked black pepper and some Worcestershire sauce for richness. I would put probably about two tablespoons. I'm not gonna measure though, I'm just gonna shake it in. And the final ingredient, some fresh breadcrumbs. Now I've got about five slices of just regular sandwich bread and I just ran it through the food processor. Now, if you don't have a food processor, a quick cheat is to simply get five slices of sandwich bread and freeze them till they're solid and then just run them through a cheese grater. You'll get virtually the same effect. Now, all that's left is to mix this together by hand. Ugh. Now, the trick with meatloaf is not to overmix. You just want to get everything clinging together, but you don't want it to be too much overworked because if you overwork it, you can dry out the meat and then you'll get a not a very nice meatloaf. Now in our baking dish here, I'm just using a metal baking tin and I've lined it with some baking paper here. I've taken half of the meatloaf mixture and I've shaped it into sort of a loaf shape, but I've put a little bit of a channel down the middle and into the channel, I'm gonna put these little boiled eggs, hard boiled eggs. And this way, we've got a little bit of egg in each slice when we cut up the meatloaf. Now this serves two functions. One, boiled eggs are nice, but the other function is because you've got the eggs in the middle and they can't be cooked any more than they already are, you won't have to worry about the meat not being cooked in the middle of the meatloaf. So then all you have to do, once you've got your eggs in place, is to place the other half of the mixture on top and then just shape it together until it's a loaf. Now as I said before, don't overwork it, just get it so it's joined together, but don't panic if it's not too perfect. Now that's ready to go into the oven, hot oven, 200 degrees Celsius, for about an hour or so, or until the juices come out nice and clear. And then we will be ready to eat some beautiful meatloaf. That's the meatloaf out of the oven. The smell is absolutely amazing. The whole house smells savory, it's wonderful. Now, after it came out of the oven, I put a bit of foil over the top and allowed the meatloaf to rest for about 10 to 15 minutes. This helps the cooking process to finish and it makes it easier to slice up the meatloaf, which we are now about to do. And here is the finished slices of meatloaf and how amazing does this look? You've got the beautiful crisp outside, the beautiful juicy meat inside, and of course those beautiful boiled eggs all through it so everyone gets a piece. Right, I'm gonna have to try a little piece right now. Mmm. Oh, the meat is beautiful and juicy. Lots of lovely flavors there. You're going to love this. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Check out my other videos at onepotchefshow.com. And until next time, see you later.